Yeah, yeah it's forever my voice is memorialized here. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems to happen maybe about once, once every year or two. Um, usually in the spring, though, so maybe we'll get it twice this year. Uh, um, all right, so we've got this box. We've got this box sitting on an inclined plane. Um, and you know that the ramp is inclined at 30 degrees, all right? So um, what you need to do is rank them in terms of which one is going to have the biggest normal force. Right? <coughs> so the idea is without any of those forces, then your normal force is just um, equal to the parallel component of gravity, right? Yeah. So we can do that. Okay. All right, now, when you push horizontally, so this is choice C, when you push horizontally, the idea is that's indirectly that's pushing it into the plane, right? Okay. So what we want to do is we want to split that up into one component that is parallel to the ramp and one that's perpendicular to the ramp. So the one that's parallel to the ramp is going to go this way, right? And the one that's perpendicular to the ramp is going to go this way, right? And this ultimately is the one that's going to increase the normal force, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? All right. So this guy here is going to have a magnitude of, well, let's see, if this is F, this angle here is still 30 degrees, right? So this here is just F times, it's the opposite sign, so the sine of 30 degrees. Does that make sense? All right. Yeah. Is there any difference between the normal force applied by A and by B? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so, all right. So let's do this. So we just figured out that C is going to increase the normal force by F times the sine of 30. Good? Very good. All right. Now, let's look at A, or D rather. D is also going to increase the normal force, right? So D we're pushing straight down. So there I'm interested in that component, right? So that's going to increase it. It turns out if you do the trig on it, it's going to increase the normal force by F times the cosine of 30. So which one of those things is bigger? Sine of 30 or cosine of 30? Cosine of 30, right? Cosine of 30 is like 0.86 or something. Sine of 30 is like 0.5. So right now, this one is winning. And this is second place, right? So then the idea is both A and B decrease it. It turns out that A, if I remember right, decreases it by the sine of 30, and B decreases it by F cosine of 30. Just by, you know, throwing your arrows the other way. Does that make sense? Is that enough? Yeah. Explanation? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so that's number 12. All right, was that the only concept you want? Yes. Okay, so problems up there we've got. God, there's always a glare here. <laughs> is that all of them? Uh, it's everyone after search for it. Okay. It's not the first. Oh, no, it is the okay. It's everyone except the first one, apparently. Okay. Yeah, so all right. <laughs> oh, oh, 31 is up there. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we don't have time to do all of them. So, quick show of hands. How many of you need to see 31? Two votes for 31. How about 34? Before five votes, six votes for 34. I should be writing this down. 31, 32, 34, with six. How about 40? Three votes for 40. Uh, 47. Holy cat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for 47. Uh, 57. When you guys come in, try to put hash marks up. All right, how about 63? All right, so I'm going to do 47, 34, and 63, and we'll see where we're at on time, all right? All right. All right. As much as you guys can keep the side conversations to a minimum, my throat will thank you.
I lost my figure. It says in the figure at the right, crate of mass M equals 100 kilograms is pushed at a constant speed of a frictionless ramp by a horizontal force. So you got to find the magnitude of the force. So your drawing probably looks something like this. We know that our angle is 30 degrees. The force is directly horizontal. Um, we know that our mass is 100 kilograms. Um, and it's moving at a constant speed. That's super important. Yeah, because that tells me that that force has got to be zero, right? All right. And uh, we are aided by the fact that it's frictionless, right? So we don't have to worry about friction. All right. So uh, let's make a drawing a little bit more detail. Um, so gravity is pulling this thing down, right? With a force of negative 980 newtons, right? Over here to that. So what should I do right away before I do anything else? Find the parallel and perpendicular components. All right. Anytime you've got an object on an inclined plane, you automatically jump from, from your force of gravity to the two parallel and perpendicular components. All right. So if you calculate them, the parallel component ends up being uh, 490 newtons in this one. And the perpendicular component is 848.7 newtons. And there, oh, no. I was, I started to say the normal forces, yeah, but that's not necessarily true. All right, so there's two of my forces. We're going to have uh, FG parallel going this way, 490 downhill, and FG perpendicular is 848.7. All right, does everybody get up to there? All right, now, we've got kind of the same problem here with F, right? Because F doesn't lie along the two coordinates. Or you know, my two axes, right? So this is actually really similar to what we were just talking about a minute ago with number whatever the concept you was on the, the concept you wanted on the first page was. So F is going this way with some magnitude. And I've got a parallel axis and a perpendicular axis, right? Strong, Marcus. You good? Yeah. Two thirty. All right. So there is my drawing of F split up into components. Is everybody okay with why this is what it has to look like? Okay. Cool. So. Um, it looks to me then like F parallel is going to be F times the cosine of 30 degrees. And F perpendicular is going to be F times the sine of 30 degrees. Good, Christian, you okay? You sure? You're confused, you're not alone. What do you got? You all right? I was just. Why it's facing this way? Well, if you push it this way and you want to draw a component, would you say that that force is contributing to pushing it up the ramp or down the ramp? So it's got to go this way. All right? And then vert, in terms of your perpendicular, if you push this way, are you more pushing it into the ramp or away from the ramp? Oh, good. Yeah, and so that's an important distinction. Those equations that we learned, you guys, for perpendicular and parallel, those are specifically for force and gravity. All right. If it's another force, then you've got to kind of sit and draw the triangle and figure out whether it's sine or cosine. Good? Yeah. All right, so let's put these forces on our drawing, which is getting really cluttered. Let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so we're going to have... The parallel component of our force is F times the cosine of 30. And the perpendicular component is F times the sine of 30. Cool? All right, I'm missing one force. What is it? Normal force. 
to fill my room to draw. And our rats. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Now, my normal force is going to be just the sum of these two things, right? So I'm going to cheat just to save our room. It's Fg perpendicular plus F perpendicular, whatever that is. Um, all right, so we're almost done, though. Um, we got to find the magnitude of F based on that. So what has to be true? What's the equation that I have? My net force is zero. These parallel forces have to cancel each other out, right? So that means F cosine 30 has got to be 490. Follow? I don't know what that little hop was that I just did. Technically, it's F cosine 30 plus negative 490 equals zero, right? Should give you what did I say 580 something? You guys are really gonna make me scroll up. 566. Oh, that's the worst smiley face ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we good with this? All right. Um, then B says, what's the force on the crate from the ramp? What's that really asking you for? The normal force, right? Actually, oh yeah, because it's frictionless. Yes, that's right. If there is friction, we have to add that in because that comes from the from the ramp too. Okay. Um, so my normal force, well, we can find that now, right? Because it's just going to be that 848 plus 566 times the sine of 30. Follow? All right. Questions with whatever number that was? Are we good? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that was number 60, no, that was 47, right? That was 34. Was it? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, let's do 47 next. That was what I meant to do first anyway. 47. Oh, I just passed it. All right, 47. The Zucchini family. Oh, oh goodness. Okay. Um, Wow, all of my draw all my drawings got put on the wrong pages here. I'm sorry, guys. I did this really quickly. So this drawing doesn't apply. Okay, so it says the Zucchini family uh, was renowned for their hand cannonball act. Um, let's see. So Emmanuel Zucchini was shot over three Ferris wheels to land in a net at the same height as the open end of the cannon at a range of 69 meters. He was propelled inside the barrel for 5.2 meters and launched at an angle of 53 degrees. His mass was 85 kilograms and he underwent constant acceleration. What was the magnitude of the force propelling him? So the idea is this. He's in a cannon, right? So there's the cannon. Here's there's our dude, right? It's inclined at an angle of not to scale 53 degrees. Okay? He's going to be launched out with some starting velocity. <laughs> and he's going to land at the same height that he was fired from. Follow? So there's two parts to this. There's the projectile portion, and I should have drawn him a little bit smaller. There's him sliding up this inclined plane as he comes out of the cannon. Follow? All right, so... The reason we're given the projectile information is we're going to work backwards and figure out how fast he was moving when he came out of the cannon. Follow? So the idea is we know that the range was 69 meters, and we know that he's launched at a starting angle of 53 degrees, and we know that the range equation is what? VO squared sine 2 theta over G. Is that right? I'm doing that from memory yet. Yeah. All right. So, do you guys agree that we know enough here that we can solve for v naught? All right. So, I'm going to hand wave and solve for v naught. Are we good with that? Yeah. Hand wave v naught. All right. So, if you do that, you get 
uh, 26.5 meters a second. That represents the velocity he has as he's exiting the cannon, right? Cool? All right, I'm going to erase all of my cannon drawings. Is that okay? All right, so. Now, so here's the bottom of the cannon. Here's Emmanuel Zucchini. His velocity down here is zero. His velocity up here is 26.5 meters a second. The problem tells us that the barrel is 5.2 meters long. What am I going to do with that information? Find the acceleration, right? So let's see, our final velocity is the 26.5, oops, that we just, sorry? That was the whole range thing that I just did. But that's VO. Yeah. And so, oh, good, good. So that's VO for the projectile portion. So the starting velocity for the projectile portion is the final velocity for the cannon. Does that make sense? Everybody good with that? Okay. So. So that gives you an acceleration inside the cannon of 67.6 meters a second squared. This, by the way, is a, is a good problem because it uses a few things. This is how the AP problems are written. All right. Part of the reason I haven't given you guys any real AP problems yet is because they're like this and they've got a lot of things. All right. So I'm going to start giving you guys some. That you guys are, are now to the point where you know enough stuff that you can probably find some. Yeah. Would accelerating someone in that, like, at that fast, is that what it keeps playing? Um, so I don't know the exact stats. This, if you divide that by 9.8, that's like 7 keys, right? Yeah. Past, that's like, a lot. I, yeah, that's a lot. For the average person, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. Uh, fighter pilot uh, ask me. <laughs> Fighter pilots and astronauts will experience that. They have to practice it, they have to condition their bodies. Oh, um, but like roller coasters, I think they set a max at, I don't know, maybe something somewhere around the neighborhood of like three and a half G's is, is a lot. I don't think it's somewhere it was like four was the max of the roller coasters. Yeah, I know like the, the top thrill dragster, you go from zero to 120 miles an hour in like four seconds. So I don't remember I did the math, but it's up there. It's, it's close to four G's, I think. All right, so are we good with this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, but I don't know if you guys are invited because you guys went last year, so I don't know. I need to look into that. I think, I think what's going to happen is if there's space on the bus, then you go, I think. All right. Let's, let's focus on you. All right. Are we all good with what I've done so far? Yes. All right. Great. So now what we're going to do. Now we're going to focus on the going to plant part. So here's the deal. Here's Emmanuel Zucchini. He's got a mass of 85 kilograms. We know that he's accelerating at this rate. What should I find? More specific. Net force. Net force. So the net force on him is going to be 85 kilograms times the acceleration he needs to get all the way over those three Ferris wheels. And so you get a net force of... Five thousand seven hundred and forty something. Forty six. Can't read my own writing. That's bad. All right, are we good up to there? All right. So then, what you're going to do? You've got your eighty five kilograms. So here's the force from the cannon. What's the other force I care about? Gravity. Which part of gravity? Parallel part of gravity, right? 
that make sense? Because my perpendicular and normal are going to cancel out, so we don't care about those. Okay. So if you find that parallel component, it ends up being 665.3 newtons. Negative, because it's down the right, right? So then we're done. See, force of the cannon plus FG parallel has got to equal my net force. Force of cannon minus 665.3 equals 5,746 and add. Let me get back. Cool? That's a, that's a good problem. How much lift? No, that was a moment. Yeah. That was a moment of weakness. <laughs> All right, are we good? Okay. Because and the reason I'm out is because you're working on the AB test. Like you need, you need to get used to working with what you know. All right. Um, some of the list of problems. I think we have time to do one more before the strategy gets here. Uh, 63, I think, was the next one. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then if I have time, 40 is next on deck. All right. This guy. I'm glad. I don't know who, who said to do this one, but this is a great one. This is a really good one. All right. So there are a couple ways of doing this. Um, So we've got this graph over here, right? And the graph is for uh, giving you the horizontal component of force versus time acting on a three kilogram ice block, right? So we know that the mass of our block is three kilograms. All right, it's only moving on the x-axis. So the fact that this is fx is kind of irrelevant because that's the only place there's any motion anyway, right? So they sort of threw in some extra information that you don't need. Okay. Um, at t equals zero, we know that our v naught, I guess that's redundant, is three meters a second. And the question is, what are its velocity? There was a, there, there were originally a couple parts that deleted them and forgot that they used to say, what are its velocity at? And it gives other questions. So anyway, my bad. What is its velocity? Okay, so we're looking for the velocity at t equals 11 seconds. All right, so notice the graph goes up to 11, right? So, thoughts? Sort of, yeah, you're really warm. You said integrate the force. So, um, yes, except. If we integrate acceleration, that would give us change in velocity, right? So what we really want to do is we want to integrate acceleration, but we don't know the acceleration. But what we do know is this. Acceleration is uh, the force divided by the mass of three kilograms, right? So at any given instant, the acceleration we're experiencing is the force divided by this, right? Follow? So if I integrate from t equals 0 to t equals 11, the acceleration with respect to time, that gives me the change in velocity, right? Hello? So we just said acceleration was net force over mass. So this is the integral from 0 to 11 of force over 3 dt, right? Hello? Well, you can pull the 3 out, so this becomes one-third of the integral from 0 to 11 of f dt. Good. All right, so what you're going to do is find the area under that big graph there. So you kind of break it up into trapezoids. So here's one trapezoid. Oh, no. Excuse me. Oh, 
Oh, I lost my trapezoid. All right, so. Area of that guy, let's see. So the green one. So area of a trapezoid is one half the base times height one plus height two, right? So my two heights are four and six. So one half, my base there is two seconds. And then two plus six. So we're gonna get eight. And then my units there are, uh, what, Newton seconds, right? Hello? Right? Oh. All right, so that red one, well, that's just three times six, so that's 18 Newton seconds. You guys see what I'm doing? Uh, there's a little triangle in here. So that's going to be one half times one times six. So that's three Newton seconds. Yes. It's that? Yeah. Sort of. Not really. uh, it's sort of tough to assign meaning to it at this point. Give me one minute and you'll see what happens. All right. All right. So we're going up to here. Minus what Newton seconds are? It's basically it's Newtons of that many Newtons applied for one second. So this is like equivalent to three Newtons being applied for one second. Um, all right. And then this black one is one half times one times four. It's two Newton seconds. What did I just do wrong? Negative. Negative. Right. Etc. So let's see. And then this this little chunk here ends up being two times four, so that's negative eight. And this little chunk here ends up being negative four. So my total so the integral from zero to eleven of f d t is let's see what are we going to get eight plus eighteen plus 3, plus negative 2, plus negative 8, plus negative 4. So it's an 8 to cancel. So 8 and 3 is 21, minus 6 is 15. Newton seconds, right? Good. So we want that. So then we're going to, where is it? Oh, so we want one third of that, right? Basically, we're going to take that and divide it by the mass. Right? So what's a Newton, you guys? This is kilograms times meters per second squared times seconds over three kilograms. So you divide and you get five. Kilograms go away. Meters per second squared times seconds gives us meters per second, right? It's telling us how much the velocity changed by. Right. So if my velocity began at, what was the starting velocity? Uh, yeah, the velocity started at 3, went up by 5, and ended up at 8. Good? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I will be honest with you. The first time I did this, I did it in a way that was way harder. Let me explain what I did, just because it might help you. Like, if you're like, I never thought to do that. I didn't either. <laughs> the first time I did this. What I did was I went through, and I at each point where the where there was a corner, I found the acceleration at that point. So I drew an acceleration type graph. And then I integrated that. So this 6 divided by 3, that's 2 meters per second squared. Na, 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 right? So I used the force time graph to find the acceleration type graph, and then I integrated that. They gave me the same answer. Okay? So if you're like, I wouldn't have thought to pull that one third out, there are other ways of doing it. And this way is sort of the most direct sort of, you know, AP physics way to do it. Cool? All right, yeah. Uh, wait, did you have negative five? <laughs> no, I have, well, so first of all, it wasn't negative. It was just a cracky equal sign. Um, and that's the change in velocity. So change in velocity is V minus V naught, which means that V is change in velocity plus V naught. So our change in velocity was 5. The problem told you that the velocity started at 3. 
Good. Sorry, I said it. I should have written down. All right, are we good? That's another good problem. We're going to start seeing more stuff like that, where like that was about forces, but it also involved some of the uh, kinematic stuff, right? So we're starting to get into some real business here. All right, uh, what do we got? We have about five minutes here. Um, I think. Well, I have five minutes. I have five minutes. Um, let me take a look at number forty. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, yeah, we can do 40. All right, so I remember I was solving the problem of the graph. It's not very good. So I gave you a little note to clarify. <clears throat> um, so here we go. We've got a, a dated box of dates. The mass is 5 kilograms. It's set sliding up a frictionless ramp. Um, all right, it says the component Vx of the box's velocity, listen to this, you guys. I don't know if you guys remember when, I, when we first started doing inclined planes, we talked about the fact that the book doesn't really use the terms parallel and perpendicular, right? I, to me, that's something that's convenient, but I don't usually stand in the book. Here, they've called the x-axis what I call the parallel axis, right? Because it says... The component Vx of the box's velocity along an x-axis that extends directly up the ramp. So they're calling this the x-axis. Follow? Is that maybe what was throwing people off? No? Okay. Um, right, so let's see. Um, what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the magnitude of the normal force on the box from the ramp. Um, oh, so our problem is we don't know the angle. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to use this information over here to find the acceleration. So our velocity is going to go to negative 3.5. That's our final velocity. Our initial velocity is 4. Time is 3 seconds. So you get an acceleration of negative 2.5 meters a second squared. Good? Um, so what's causing that acceleration? Well... There are only three forces acting on this thing. There's the perpendicular component of gravity. Hey, Mr. Adams. Hey. Thanks for coming. And there's your normal force. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> all right, now we got a normal force, ready? Right? Are we all good up to there? Yeah. All right, and what's the force I'm missing? The parallel component pulling this thing down, right? All right, well, we just found our acceleration. What's the force that's going to cause that acceleration? What do you got? Yeah, these guys cancel out, so this is my net force, right? So net force equals uh, Fg parallel, right? Well, we know our our uh, our acceleration, so we can do we know the mass. Yes. So remember, net force is mass times acceleration. <clears throat> Fg parallel is just Fg times the sine of theta. And we know everything, so we can find our theta. So let's do it. We got five kilograms. I'm being sloppy about my sig digs. <clears throat> our acceleration, we just found it's negative 2.5 meters per second squared. That's got to equal our force of gravity. We know that it's just five times 9.8 to the sine of the angle. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. All right. So from there, you can just you know solve inverse sine and find your angle. Um, when you find the angle, you end up getting. Where did I set my notebook? Is it seventy-five percent? Is it that steep? It turns out to be like fourteen point eight degrees. Used cosine instead of sine when you did your parallel component. I don't component. have the right answer. Oh, okay. All right, are we good? <laughs> I used, I used, I used the <laughs> All right, is everybody good up to here? All right, so then once you know that, you can find your FG parallel and your normal force is equal to it, right? Cool? All right.
problems with that. Okay, so all you guys have for Monday, the other side of that sheet, so that's what, 5.3b, the back of it, last time Tuesday. Oh, wow, that's nice. Cool. So how many questions? Is that short? So that buys you some extra time. It has to do with it. Party. And after you're done party, then we'll have to do some of the other problems in this one. That's up to you guys. It's fine when we do the problems, right?